Howdy y'all, it's Jordan Smith, Chief Builder and owner at Smith House Company. How do you properly install a window into an integral WRB sheathing system? Let's find out today on Smith House. If you want to take your skills to the next level in the trades, make sure you go check out MT Copeland for instructional videos like this one, but so much more. We're presenting long form classes that really get into the details of construction, which will help take somebody from apprentice who knows nothing about the trades through journeyman all the way through mastery of the subject. Make sure you go check out the website at mtcopeland.com. Jumping right into our discussion of the day, what is the proper way to install and flash a flanged window into a integral WRB sheathing product? These products are things like Zip, the green boards that you see everywhere, or their competitor WeatherLogic from LP. Both of these boards are an engineered sheathing product to where the weather resistant barrier is built into the board. So we've actually pressed that WRB layer on the outside of the board, making the whole board water resistant. And when you tape the seams, airtight as well. So that's what I've drawn up here. I've got four by eight sheets of, this is blue, so I guess it's weather logic. And we have taped the seams here. And we have an opening right here where our window is going to be installed. Now, different manufacturers will give different recommendations on how much space they want around their window. Some of them are really large, like a half inch on each side. Some of them are down to like maybe a quarter of an inch. So somewhere between that one eighth on the very tight side to maybe three quarters on the very large side of an opening oversized on all four sides so that this window can go in very easily. You don't want to get it so close that you're not able to properly detail the inside. So you don't want to make this like plus a 16th on all sides because a couple things. One, if your framing is just a little wonky, it's not quite true, plumb, square, and level, then your window won't be true, plumb, square, and level. It's going to be off one way or the other. So giving yourself a little bit of room will allow you to level that window much easier. And then the second reason is when you're detailing this, my favorite method is a backer rod with a sealant. If you have a backer rod of a set size, let's say we're putting in a half inch backer rod all the way around this, well, it's much easier to install that if you have that consistent gap all the way around. Yes, you can use spray foam, but even with spray foam, you're going to need some gap to install the spray foam and have it do its job. Not a big fan of spray foam, but that's a different conversation for a different video. Today, we're looking mainly at the weatherproofing from the outside. So let's go ahead and prepare our opening. The first step that I like to do is I like to go ahead and use this acrylic tape, the same tape that we have used for our seams. I like to take that acrylic tape up and around the opening, tie in the ends of my board back to my framing. Because when I do the air sealing from the inside, I'm going to be tying back to that framing as well. So I want to make sure that there's nowhere for air to get in between my sheathing and my framing. So tying that back with tape all the way around will make sure that I've completed my air sealing um, boundary later when I do my caulking on the inside. The next step is we add a pan. And I don't care what kind of pan you want to use. Do you like using a full bent metal pan? Those are awesome. Those are going to last a very, very long time. You still have to detail them outright, but I really like metal pans. I tend to use a tape product for my pans, either like a DuPont Flex Wrap. That's a good one. Zip is making a stretch tape. That's really good. So I'll either use one of those or my ultimate preference is a fluid applied. So this is something where you're going to actually be squeezing it out of a caulk gun and applying it with a trowel. And that 
I mean, it adheres to your framing so well. It's super durable. It's going to last a long, long time, and it's going to keep all that water from going into the framing. So whatever your preferred method is, you want to build a pan on the bottom side. And the purpose of this pan is so that when water gets through that window, which it may never, but it might. And if it does, you got to think what happens when water gets through that window. In this case, it's going to leak down and it's going to hit our waterproof pan. Now we can build that pan flat and put a dam on the back side. So that's a little, it's a little ledge on the back side that my window goes in against and any water that comes through can't go into the house because it's the back dam and it has to go forward. I prefer to set my sills at a five degree angle. Tilting the sills at a five degree angle just ensures that any water that does get in there is going to be going to the outside. Now, the only way that this works is if you get all of the details right, and we're gonna be talking about those remaining details here in a second. Let's put the window in. So that's my window, bang, right there. We've got the window, it's a flanged window. So it's gonna be mounted all the way up against the sheathing. I put my fasteners in and the window is installed, meaning mechanically fastened to my sheathing and my framing, but there has been no waterproofing yet. If I am doing a fluid applied all the way around, if I don't use any of this tape and I just do fluid applied here all the way around, well then I will use a bead of fluid applied around this to set my window back into, and that really, that really sinks it in from that back side. In this case, where I'm using a tape system, I'll just put a bead of maybe NP1 sealant up these sides and across the top, not on the bottom. That's very important. Don't seal up the bottom, whether in this stage or in later stages. You wanna leave that bottom open in case any water does get through the window and falls down onto your pan it needs to drain out towards the front. So come up and around the, the top and the two sides with a sealant and then add your window. And now, now that your window's in, you can add your tape up the sides and then properly shingle it by putting the tape across the top last. It's important that anytime you're doing any waterproofing materials, you get in the habit of shingling your materials properly. So when we go up the side here, then we come over the top right here and water will run over this one and then on top of this one. If we do a reverse lap, if we do it like this, then we have water running down and able to get in between those materials because we have lapped them backwards. You notice we don't put any tape on this bottom here. And it might also be a good idea to actually shim that bottom out. Although in reality, when you're putting these windows in, that bottom flange wrinkles enough as you're installing the fasteners that there's always plenty of room for any water to escape. Um, but if you want to use some sort of a shim system, horseshoe shims are a great way of pushing that out just a little bit. And we're only talking about maybe a 16th to let any water that gets back there out. So now you have a properly installed and waterproofed window because any water that comes down is pushed outside and drips off this front. Now, if you're like me, the first time you see that, you're like, whoa, that whole bottom is just leaking like a sieve. I can see air from inside all the way to the outside. This is only the waterproofing portion of the window install. On the inside, is where we do our air sealing. So on the inside, I would run backer rod all the way around all four sides, and then I would use a sealant or a caulk to caulk that window in from the back side. So I completely seal the window from the back side, making a completely airtight assembly. But if the window itself leaks, there's room for the water to escape out of the assembly. Joe Stebrick says there's two types of windows, those that leak and those that will. This is such an easy way of making sure that your builds are gonna last a very long time and you're not having to worry about rot down the road because the water that maybe leaks in through the window isn't able to escape. 
I hope this makes sense. I hope it all translates on the drawings. We're gonna be doing more videos where we're actually at Windows doing installs. So stay tuned for that. Go check out mtcopeland.com for more training opportunities. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe if we've earned it. Go follow us over at mt.copeland, at Jordan Smith Builds, at Smith House Co. I think that's all of them. <laughs> we'll see you next time on Smith House.